Hey class, so today we're gonna be working on some Photoshop stuff, so let's dive into it. So a couple weeks ago, Lexar had a competition, and as always, I'm gonna jump in on the competition. What they did is they gave a set of raw files for artists to go in and, and tear up and do whatever they want with. They could do color application, photo manipulation, sky was the limit, no holds bar. Very cool contest. As an artist myself, I thought that diving into in today's subject matter, well, you're going in and getting sections of images that somebody else took and actually making your own photo manipulations out of that, by all means, go for it. Uh, so let's dive into the piece that I created. So this piece that we're doing today is another dive into the uh, Australian standards. Uh, when we were doing these a couple weeks ago, where it was the New South Wales standards and how these things relate to photography and photography manipulation. Uh, this one is more photography manipulation based on, uh, I think, the invisible packet of stuff so if you google i'll try to put a thing down in the description or, or something down here uh new south wales photo lesson plan formats and you guys can get some different uh lesson plans out of that so this is really for those um you need something to do right now so as i said we're diving into photoshop and we're working with the australian standards again again we're just uh working on photo manipulation basics so go, putting several images together stacking those images making them blend together giving it a little bit of effect by adding some layers of color just to spruce up the overall image but that's it we're not doing a major deep dive into photoshop again i'm i'm i know about photoshop and i know how to use it but i'm by no means an expert in it and i and i fully am aware of that and i just you know use this as a guide to get you as a jumping off point. I always expect my students to do better work than me and I expect no less from any other teacher as well. So all I'm doing is I'm stacking these two images. I've used the uh, magic wand to go in and highlight the section that I wanted to re re take out. And I want to pull out the green background of this handheld phone to change that into its own layer. Uh, I always like setting it out into its own layer so then I have a isolated version that has not been touched. So if I need to go in and tweak it or add another layer that's the same, I can just hit Alt and add in that other layer. Once you, once doing that, I mean, the one of the biggest issues I found with these kinds of green background layers, again, I'm pulling most of these images off of uh, Google. Just doing a simple Google search, looking for backgrounds and whatnot. I will say that the background I'm using, the uh, alleyway here, it was a shot I did when I was in Boston. Austin. So it is, that is mine, and I do really try hard to, if any time I'm working on a photo, I'm using my own stuff. I'd rather use my own stuff rather than somebody else's images, even though I'm making a completely new piece. It's just a per personal thing for me. Uh, but going in there, refining it out, any of those sections, changing the levels on just that one pair, one uh, cell. Notice how I click that little box with the arrow pointing down that isolates it to the layer below it. That comes in really handy as you go through and you're adding different elements in, if you're adding in exposures, you're adding in levels, you're adding in contrast, brightness, whatnot, all these things being tied to the level prior is high importance to make sure that you're getting a, uh, everything's working together instead of working against it. Uh, so here we go, we got exposure and I'm doing the exposure offset and gamma correction and what I'm doing is I'm trying to darken up that skin tone so that it shows the shadow effect of the alleyway itself so it looks more realistic to itself. Now this picture that I'm porting in now was one of those from the Lexar project that I was telling you guys about uh, earlier and it brings it in because it's a raw file it imports it in where you can kind of do what you would normally do in Lightroom so I'm going in changing some highlights change some contrast I definitely want to have a lot more whimsical look to it so that as I bring it in I'm getting that space that where this this definitively is not just another picture inside of the phone but it's a different place inside of the phone that's the big thing when you're doing these manipulations you want to try and create a sense of fantasy in my opinion again going in i'm going to reduce the amount of visibility to it so i'm going to lower the opacity sometimes i'll lower the fill that way i can see the image behind it and then i'm slowly taking out sections so that i can cut around that phone a lot easier that way i can see it a lot better changing up the brush so i get a uh, fade effect uh, soft brush and the reason we want to have that is so that as we're going around those the um, image you have that fading effect and it's not a hard line cut because then you're trying to marry those images together again now one of those things that i, I t noticed when i was working on this is that the bar that goes over the tent i had to take out a lot of those sections as well as well and that became kind of problematic in trying to get the pencil the um the eraser the brush 
just in there to erase those levels of pixels. Now I know you could use a pen tool for that and you can go in there and you can cut each of those level sections out. I didn't want to do that because as an instructor, as, as I'm trying to teach you guys how to do so, some of this stuff, I think it is important to see the fade of those pieces being erased away and understanding how the mouse or if you're using a tablet and a pen, having that dexterity of, of how that material, of how that tool works in your hand is a lot more uh, necessary than just going in and cutting out and using the pen tool to get those nice fine lines. Again, this is a, um, a technique that I choose to do with my students. If you guys feel it's something different, by all means, take that, take that um, lead on that. Now, as you're adding those layers of imagery into your illustration, make sure that you're being aware of what layer is being stacked where. Now, this is a, a painter's technique and where we're trying to stack the layers of the image in the correct order so that you don't, uh, unlike a painting, you can easily just jump things around until you figure out, oh, it goes between the phone and the image and the, uh, the girl in the tent and not on top of the girl in the tent or not behind the phone. And it's one of those things where you have to really kind of play around it. I, as I wanted that scenery to come out of the phone, I need to put the image on top of the phone outline and not behind it. Now, if I wanted to do a simple cut, uh, just like drag and drop and, and layer it in there, put it behind the phone and you'll have that, have that uh, piece there. For me, because I want to have the tent um, and the and the force coming out of the phone I definitely need to put everything in front of the phone and try and reduce everything around into that frame
Also, don't forget, I, I, I did a lot of these for Instagram. So if you check out my Instagram feed, you'll see, a, a, I think I did probably like 150 different variances, different variations and different color patterns. Go check those out if you need some other ideas as well. I've also got uh, another contest I did probably a year and a half ago. So again, just keep going down the feed and you'll see way more far out weird pictures of myself doing weird things with computers um it was, a, it was another contest this was for nvidia for um for something and they you can make a video where um i, I had to make several pictures where i was putting myself gaming in different locations um anywhere from on top of elephants to um, jumping off of a mountain. I was even chasing myself out of a helicopter at one point. So go check those out if you want some uh, other crazy ideas. And one of those big things as, a, as an instructor, I can't stress enough, learn your hotkeys. You'll notice when I'm changing from the circle to the hand um, that I'm changing, I'm pressing the space bar to use the grab section, uh, use the grab tool so that I can just move around, move the cursor around without moving or changing the image. So um, spacebar is for the hand tool, the B is for the brush tool. And then one of the last things that we want to touch base on is adding levels of color, levels of light into the image. So right here, I've got a nice pale, like an ochre yellow that I'm painting over the image itself and just kind of getting into those, all those little nooks and crannies of the mist uh, going across the planks of the board and then changing that to an overlay, uh, which you can then change the opacity, change the fill if you want to kind of minimize the amount of um, shade that's in there, the amount, so it's not too much, but just giving that hint of light to just a little kiss of that of that element not doing too much on if it let it take away from there again change the overlay to something else if you want to do soft light you want to do a pen light you want to do uh, a dissolve all these give some sort of variant variation to the overall image and just gives a little bit of a change and that kind of gives you the uh the look that you're going for or throw in another level of it and i'm done um a lighter darker gray so that we can get in for the sky now this one i was playing around with a bunch and i'm trying to isolate those those big bright parts where the the sunlight's hitting the the real world a little extra hard for me and i, and I want to try and minimize that and, and uh, reduce it so changing that to where i'm just cutting around certain elements certain certain spaces and also putting that in the right location so it's only touching on the the piece itself Again, just go in there, change the opacity, change the the way that it's being seen. If it's an over, if which other filter, if you want overlay, soft light, whatnot, try, dress those up and gives it a better look. But Lexar had this cool contest where they had this block of images and they wanted you to have a free-for-all activity for to do. And uh, there was like a camera as a main prize and a couple SD cards. I didn't win, uh, but I did throw my, hand, my hat in the ring and I did several different iterations. Uh, when I do some of these contests, just a forewarning for all my Instagram people, um, I go nuts. And this for this piece here, um, I, I was trying to do 22 there was 22 images in the file and i wanted to do 22 different iterations every single day so every single day was a block of 22 of one theme that i did so i had like a red theme i had a negative but each theme was tailored to that block of images so then i could just 
do one batch at a time and I was just doing that one thing. So today's photo manipulation was, it's kind of a expanded version of one that I, of these two that I did where it was a, an in book series and then a guy's, somebody's holding up a phone and you're seeing the image coming out of the phone. So I wanted to dive into that a little more. I thought it was an interesting uh, photo manipulation. It wasn't really difficult for me uh, and I hope that you guys can learn some new activities off of that. Just a quick update. So we're in quarantine and it's kind of the end of term for me. And I'm gonna be making more videos still, so videos will be coming out. However, I will be making less videos um, just because it's summer and it's harder to make videos when I'm not inside the classroom as this whole thing has become. Uh, but uh, just a caveat though, I am teaching a couple classes this summer and I'm recording those classes. I'll be uploading those for you guys in the future. So you guys will have more stuff going on. Uh, I will be mixing this up with a class I taught last year. So one, when you see a video and there's a bunch of people in the room, this was before quarantine. The video, the other videos that you see that are kind of like in this Zoom-esque weird format, that's gonna be uh, the stuff that was current. So just give you guys a forewarning on that. Okay guys, so we're gonna go ahead and wrap up class. As always, don't forget to do your homework, which is like, subscribe, share on all the various platforms. Get out there, get some inspiration, grow the community, show another student something cool so that everybody can learn as always. Uh, as always, stay safe, wash your hands, we love you. Make sure you guys are following social distancing protocols, staying healthy, staying positive during this time. Um, trying to keep everybody's spirits light, happy, and fresh kind of come up with new ideas myself so look forward to seeing you guys tune into some other classes and checking out some other videos as always i will see you guys next class as always i will see you guys next class until then later guys so today we're supporting hydra i will say not having to wear like a shirt and pants every day is great because i've been wearing shorts for like two months it's fantastic oh <sighs>